And once more, you have returned. As though drawn by some powerful otherworldly magnetism, you find yourself here. Well, isn't that to be expected? She told you as much. This library is always waiting. Ah, uh, greetings once more, my guest. Like Chorus offers you a smile. It's a small smile, relatively understated, but it lights up the gloom more effectively than any candle. Shall we continue where we left where we last left off? Continue the story. Forget. Continue the story. Ugh! I can't believe this. A shadowy figure was tramping through the through the moors. A hood drawn over their face. Rain pelted the figure from all sides, and the wind stirred the edges of their worn traveling cloak. Still, the figure did not slow in the sword for march. They could not. If they did, they might collapse from fatigue, and then they would never be able to get back up again. The rain on these desolate moors was unforgiving. It fell from the gray, overcast sky endlessly, threatening to submerge the landscape with water. Oh yeah, also, hello everyone, my name is Jaber, and welcome back to Once on the Winds of Night. Sorry, I had to get that out of the way. Not that the, not that the landscape was much to look at, really. Whee! There were a few scrubby, weather-blasted bushes and a withered old tree that seemed ready to collapse. That was all. Setu? Setu? Am I saying that right? I know it's French. Setu? Right? French dessert, de croix, and they were not particularly impressed. That accursed goblin. What did he take me for? If I see him again, I'll wring his neck. The traveler cursed under their breath. There's no reason for them to do so, as there was nobody within 100 miles who could hear them. But it made them feel a bit better. It gave them a reason to keep going. Revenge. They couldn't let themselves die out here. Not until they had tracked down that... That... Conviving... Conniving... Backstabbing rogue and... What? 
killed him? No, 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 that would never work. The traveler was a merchant, not a mercenary, and they had never killed anybody before. They were a vegetarian, for goodness sake. Aw, oh, damn it, I have to play as a vegetarian? God fucking damn it, no. Large country, and the goblin would be gone long by now. Oh. They would never be. They would never see him again. No, I can't back down. I will find him. I will. The traveler's ears twitched. Their nose was running. Ew, gross. Same here. They sniffled, trying to stem the trail of snot that was beginning to trickle from the right nostril. That wasn't very appealing. Thank you for telling me in graphic detail. The rain had seeped through their traveling cloak, and the traveler's skin was icy cold. Even their shoes were waterlogged, and they were good shoes too. High quality dragon hide from the best tailor in Charlotte. Not that it mattered now, they were ruined. That goblin, goblin, I have to find him. I'll show him what for. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute, you're wearing dragon scale, sh dragon hide shoes, but you're a vegetarian? I see a problem with that. And that, in the mind, if I use, in the, I guess, well, you know what? No, I'm thinking of vegans, they wouldn't, they would definitely not use any animal products, but I guess, I, yes, so it's, it's a vegetarian, but it's fine. He could have dropped me off outside the village gates, but no, it's only a five minute walk, he said, follow the path, he said. What path? The traveler had been duped and they knew it. The goblin had not only taken their money, but had refused to deliver them to their destination. They had been walking for five hours and had still not encountered a single dwelling. The rain was getting heavier. The traveler did not fancy their chances. What if they died? But life, as always, has a way of providing when we need it the most. When things look grim and we have lost all hope, there's always a light to guide us. A light that takes us by the metaphorical hand and envelops us in warmth. At least that is how stories work. It would be a tragically short tale if the main character died within the first five minutes. It was when the traveler finally accepted the possibility of their own imminent death, with teary eyes and a snotty nose, that they chanced upon it. Salvation. There in the distance. Over the tops of the of one of the main, many hills was a shape, a structure, a building. It was no piece of mere vegetation like the other markers that dotted the environment. The shadow, though faint, had walls and a roof, and there were lights flickering in the windows like fireflies. <laughs> ah, the, tra the traveler gulped. They had almost succumbed to the cold. Their fiery indignation towards the goblin had faded, alongside their last scraps of strength, and they had been on the verge of surrender. Sweet, blissful surrender. But they could hardly do that now. They had to keep going. 
Oh my god, you're cute. Oh my! Are you alright? The sodden traveler was met in the entrance of the church by a young woman wearing the garb of a nun. Her her aren't nuns nun don't nuns like keep their hair in their their hat. Whatever it's called. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> Let's just take a minute to listen to the religious music of this. Was her habit was navy. Her hair. What? What the fuck does that mean? Her habit was navy. I don't know what that means. Her habit was navy. Her hair was cornflower blonde. Cornflower blonde. Her eyes were blue. These blue eyes were fringed by very long, pale eyelashes. And when she blinked, the traveler feared she might lacerate her own irises with them but such was such was their length in a word she was pretty almost inhumanly so enough to take the traveler's breath away I, I'm fine but the traveler was uneasy on their feet and they faltered I um I think um I need. I might need to sit down for a few moments. Oh, but of course. Please rest a while. The nun took off, took hold of the traveler's hand. Her skin was soft and warm, and the traveler's face flushed from the close contact. Not that the nun noticed. The traveler's face was, after all, still obscured by a heavy hood. The nun led the traveler to one of the wooden pews, and there the traveler sat. They had not realized how exhausted they were until the pressure had been taken off their feet. Oh dear, you are exhausted. You should stay here for the night. Uh, oh no, I couldn't. I don't want to impose, and there is somewhere else I need to be. Don't be silly. It is raining witches and warlocks outside. <laughs> oh, I've never heard that before, but okay. It's all right. I'm rather durable. The traveler raised one slender arm, the folds of their cloak fluttering, and tried to flex her muscles. The nun did not seem impressed. Though she was a soft woman, with gentle curves and golden hair, there was a certain hardness about her. Schoolmistressy, mis perhaps, that made one point absolutely apparent. If she wanted to care for somebody, she would, no matter how unwilling that person that somebody was. The traveler was weak against people like this. That is very impressive, but you are dripping wet. <sighs> you will catch your cold of your death of cold. Whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger? And whatever does kill you, kills you! Wow, thank you. Uh, yes, I didn't think of that. It, then it is a good thing you chance upon this church. We don't get many visitors. The nun's voice trailed off, and the traveler felt inclined to ask why that was. It sounded like the beginning of a story, some narrative thread one would do well to follow. But the nun shook her head, and the moment passed. Are you hungry? The traveler was hungry, starving in fact, but they had more pressing concerns to address. I was wondering if you could answer a question. And what might that be? How far away is Castella? Castella. Or, is it Castella or Castella? I don't know how to... I'm just gonna say Castella. Hmm? I suppose it's a good ten miles away. It would take two hours to reach on foot. In this weather, however, it could take as much as four or five. Ten miles? So much for five minutes down the path. That goblin. When I see him, I'll hit him so hard his ancestors will feel it. Goblin? Are you, by any chance, going to the market in Castello? 
That's right. I have words to sell, and I need to sell them. It is imperative I get to the village before the break of day so I can set up my stall. And you say that you need to, but that is not possible. The rain is too great in your condition. Who cares about my condition? If I don't make any sales, I won't have enough money to eat. That's the reality of life. Especially after the traveler had given that goblin five gold coins. Five gold coins was not an especially large sum, but it all added up. The nun, however, remained firm. If you want to know who cares about your condition, I do. As a servant of Lady Madeline. Madeline? Madeline. 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 As the servant of Lady Madeline, it would be a great sin for me to let you leave in this state. It is a suicide march. You will die. What? No buts. I don't even know you! I don't even know you! Why do you care so much? Because it is my calling to care. I don't want to see any more people suffer. Not this time. Not the not this time hung in the air, suspended by its own ellipses. It was, again, an invitation to ask questions, a loose thread in a story that was only just unraveling. But it had not unraveled enough. Not yet. There were further introductions to be done. There will be no more arguing. You will stay here tonight whether you want to or not. What a pain. It was not the traveler had to admit the friend's hour. Now, you must get some food in your belly. <laughs> you must get some food in your belly. When was the last time you ate? Uh, I'm not sure. Six or seven hours ago, maybe. That will never do. I will have to tell Daffodil. Daffodil? She's the old other sister who tends to this church. I will wake her and tell her about you, and we can make you some food. Oh no! No, 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 no. You don't need to link anybody. Not on my account. Yeah, but I must. It is my duty as a sister. And though the traveler wanted to object, it was their duty as a merchant to sell their wares. They could not. The expression on the nun's face was so determined it would have felt like a great cruelty to rob her of this chance. I will tell Daffodil. You, meanwhile, will remain here. I will. You must. Alright, alright. You can look around a bit if you wish, but there isn't anything particularly interesting. You can try to steal our valuables if you have half a mind to pursue a career as a criminal, but you would be wasting your time. There isn't wor anything worth here anything here worth selling, stealing. You make me sound like some sort of rogue. I was not trying to accuse you, I was simply informing you of our financial circumstances. The churches have been in a state of decline as of late. Is that why there are only two sisters working here? That is a bit complicated. A troubled expression fell, fell upon the nun's countenance, and the traveler felt guilty for having asked the question at all. It was clear there was a deeper mystery afoot, but the traveler did not did not know what. So, the nun clapped her hands together. Before I leave, is there anything you would like to know? Yes, I just realized you haven't told me your name. My name? Oh. My name is Jeff. The nun blinked, her spiky lashes fluttering. Once again, the traveler worried her lashes might pierce those clear blue eyes of hers, and they would leak optical fluid down her cheeks. Well, thank you for telling me that in gruesome detail! That's something I really wanted to fucking imagine in my brain. It, that was a mere fancy, however, and such a gory scene did not truly transpire. No shit! It has been such a while since anybody has, has asked for my, ask my name, I quite forgot. What the fuck?! I apologize for my rudeness. It was quite the oversight. It's fine, I don't mind. You are giving me a place to stay. Yes, well. The nun smiled a soft, charming smile, accentuated by a light pink tinge to her cheeks, and ducked her head. 
Traveler sat on the wooden pew and glanced about the church with a mild, with mild, with mild interest. With mild interest. Well, guys, that's gonna be it for this episode of Once on a Windswept Night. So with that being, with that being said, if you guys enjoyed this and would like to see more of this game, then leave a like down below, leave a comment down below, share it with your friends, subscribe if you haven't, ring that notification bell, and remember, die safely. Hold on a second. Hold on. Before I leave, before I leave, actually, you know what? I'm gonna exit the game. Wait, no, wait, go back, back, back. Okay, we're gonna record. gonna break okay Let's see what happens this time Let's see if it's any different good thing I didn't end it too soon prematurely oh you want to leave but what if I don't let you what if I want you to stay here with me forever for all eternity okay it's the same thing isn't it like horse stares at you Her eyes are wide and strangely empty just your imagination, or do they look curiously hollow? What has happened to her? Has she broken? You shuffle back a little in your seat. Your breath catches in your chest. Good thing I didn't end this. What is she going to do? Good thing I didn't end it too soon. She wants you in place. Her gaze steely. Okay, I guess it's the same thing then. <laughs> she starts to giggle. Was she just making fun of you? That isn't nice for a second. You're seriously scared. Okay, this is the only same stuff over and over again. <laughs> sorry, sorry. You pout. closing once again well I was hoping it was gonna be something a little bit different like oh you're gonna leave again how dare you or something like that I was expecting something like that to happen but with that being said if you guys enjoyed this and would like to see more of this game then leave a like down below leave a comment down below share it with your friends subscribe if you haven't ring that notification bell and remember die safely bye bye